Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ this morning, this beautiful morning. I am Reverend Liz Patz, pastor of St. Paul's, and I welcome you. If you are visiting with us this morning, thank you for being here. It is our hope that you experience God's love in this time of gathering together. Announcements for this week. We do need two volunteers on Tuesday at 10 a.m. to make phone calls for the frozen meal program at the Ministry House. You can shoot me an email or text after worship if you're interested. We have an announcement from Karen Snyder, a member of the directory team, which is uh, moving along very, very well. Karen? Good morning. It's wonderful to see all your smiling faces today. And um, it's so exciting that we're going to have a new photo directory where we can see everyone's picture. Um, we have three opportunities this week. If you have not sent in a photo of yourself yet, um, three opportunities this week to have your picture taken at the church. And um, we will be wearing masks. Um, of course, you won't have to wear your mask if you're having your picture taken, but <laughs> we will be wearing masks and we will doing, be doing the social distancing. So it will be a safe environment for you. And we're really excited to get everyone's picture in that new directory. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Karen. We also have some ministry team meetings this week. Are there any other announcements this morning? All right, friends, if there are no more announcements, let us move into our call to worship. Again, please read aloud the words in bold. We come here to draw water, thirsty for new life. We come here to draw water, bringing our past and our present, our messy truths and our deepest scars. We come here to draw water, carrying shame, and in need of grace. Fortunately for us, God always meets us at the well. So breathe deeply and drink up. God is here. The water is clean. Let us worship God. Let us sing our morning gathering song, Come to Me, by Christopher Grundy. to me. 
I invite you now to focus on our altar. Look closely at the altar. Have you noticed changes from week to week? Slow but steady changes. We began the series with empty wheels and an overflowing mess of ribbons. Each week after worship, I have woven several ribbons from that pile into the wheels. The altar table is thinning and the wheels are filling in. Where do you find yourself this morning? In the pile on the table, unraveled and weary, woven together on the wheel, things falling into place. Or maybe you're feeling like the empty space on the wheel, a blank canvas, the old unraveled to make way for the new. Let it all be a reminder to us of God's presence in our moments of unraveling, of the promise that God hems us in, behind, and before. Let us pray. Holy God, unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you. And as you do, clear space in our hearts for your word. We are listening. We are praying. Amen. Let us together pray the prayer of confession. Together, like the woman at the well, we so often are unraveled by shame. We carry shame for broken relationships. We carry shame for being unable to balance work and parenting, tithing and bills, productivity and Sabbath. We get stuck in a comparison game and in critical self monologues, consumed with the nagging feeling that we should be able to do more. Forgive us for forgetting that we are made in your image. Forgive us for forgetting that you see us and love us as we are. Unravel the shame that unravels us. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Let us take a moment of silent confession and reflection before God. Friends, the waters of mercy and healing are poured over you. God is loving and faithful to those who come to God. Come, seek the loving presence and be healed. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I invite the children to prepare for time for worship. I'll invite our teacher, Kylie. Good morning. Good morning, Hayden and Grayson. How are you? Can you give me a thumbs up if you're doing good? Can you do a thumbs up? Good job. Awesome. Hayden, have you ever been really hot and really thirsty? When was a time you were really hot and really thirsty? Can you think of a time? I you were running and playing and getting really hot? Yeah. How did it feel when you were really hot and really thirsty? Yeah, because I didn't go for water 
in 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 I just hold the and I just hold the lights. Yeah, and then what and I did. Awesome. <laughs> and I just walk and I just go for a walk on the bike. Walk. <laughs> Very good. Well, sometimes we get really hot and really thirsty. And today our story is about a woman who is also really hot and really thirsty. Yeah, and she met Jesus at the well in the desert. So we're going to listen to the Bible story from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 1 through 29. Today we're going to listen to a Bible story from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 1 through 29. One day, Jesus was in a place called Samaria. Remember that Jesus was a Jew, and Jews lived in a place called Jerusalem. Most Jews did not go to Samaria and were not friends with Samaritans. But Jesus traveled with his disciples through Samaria on purpose, and he came to a well at the hottest time of the day. He found a woman there at the well, all by herself. Now in those times, people did not have faucets and running water in their homes, so they had to walk to a well, which is a deep hole in the ground with water to fill a bucket of water and bring it back home. When Jesus saw the woman, he asked her to give him a drink. The woman was shocked that Jesus was speaking to her, for Jesus was a stranger and they belonged to different cultures and religions. But after talking with her for some time, Jesus told her that he would offer her God's living water, water that would help her to always know and remember God's love and goodness. Open up your envelope for today, titled August 16th. Inside, you will find a few activities that go along with our story of the Samaritan woman at the well. The first activity is a picture of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Go ahead and color them sitting at the well. The second activity, you will find foam pieces of a well. Look at the picture on your handout inside and assemble the foam pieces to match the picture. You can glue them together so that they look the same. And the last activity is a bonus activity for after church. Today during church we're going to do one together and then you'll have an opportunity to do so after church as well. As you watch your capsules grow, always remember that this water is a reminder of God's love and goodness for us. We are so excited and we hope you enjoy your activities and we can't wait to see them at the end of church. Hayden, can you see my glass of water in my little capsule here? Can you see it? What do you think will happen if I put it in the water? Do you have any ideas? Yeah. Do you think this will get really big? I wonder how big this is going to get. So we're going to put it in, okay? And then at the end of the church, we'll see what it turns into, okay? And then you can do this later, too. All right. Oh, I'm excited. We'll see what it looks like. <laughs> As we move into our special music, I'd like to point out that this was a congregational uh, selection. When we put an all call out for um, favorite worship music, this particular song uh, was was named. So let us hear this very powerful word set to song. Sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength and my story story's just 
The scripture lesson this morning comes from John 4, verse 1 through 29. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, So you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, 
who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah. Can he? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman is a conversion story. The woman meets Jesus at the well and is moved to go invite others to him. Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? Imagine that for a minute. A stranger telling you everything you have ever done. It's just her and Jesus. This isn't a public encounter, but still, to be told everything you've ever done. How many of us would get defensive, like, whoa, let me explain that one. Maybe embarrassed? Would you try to stop the stranger? Maybe you wouldn't want to hear everything you've ever done. In this story, Jesus telling the Samaritan woman everything she has ever done moves her to follow him. Why? I'd imagine hearing my indiscretions named out loud would make me self-conscious, paranoid about who this man is, maybe even indignant, like who the heck are you to tell me? But this very experience moves this woman from confusion and protest to Christian witness. In order for this moment in scripture to be fully appreciated, understand a few things. First, like the scripture says, at this point in history, there's a long standing hostility between Jews and Samaritans. Differences in religious practices like interpreting scripture and where God should be worshiped. These led Jews to consider Samaritans unpure, ritually unclean. Samaritans were outsiders. The Samaritan woman is smart to be suspicious of this Jewish man from out of town talking to her. Second, 
Scripture says Jesus had to go through Samaria. But geographically, this isn't true. There were other well-known, well-traveled routes. Of course there were other routes. Jews and Samaritans didn't want anything to do with each other. So it's more like Jesus was compelled to travel through Samaria. He intentionally went to a place where his presence would stir up deeply held tensions and prejudices. We call Jesus a way maker. Here, the way he took, everyone else avoided. Third, this may seem like an everyday common scene, two people talking in a public place, but it would have been considered shameful, indecent, for a man to talk alone with a woman, even in a public place. When the disciples come back, scripture says they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said anything. At other times in the gospels, the disciples do complain when Jesus crosses these social taboo boundaries. On this occasion, they didn't say it, but they thought it. In so many ways, according to social conventions and resentments, this encounter was impossible, yet possible with God. And maybe that is what the woman found so compelling. Maybe that is what unraveled the woman's defenses brought down the walls that divide and keep out and set free any limit she had placed on what God can do. Jesus proclaims to her that God's kingdom is open to all, that God's love and grace are bigger than religious and cultural boundaries. God's love and grace supersedes whatever long-held social hostilities and distrust we impose on ideas different than ours. Jesus names everything she has ever done and holds nothing against her. Personally, spiritually, socially, he holds nothing against her and instead Jesus offers living water. He offers her new life, eternal life. Living water is fresh and flowing. It's not hid or contained underground in cisterns. Living water flows and its force and energy can move the earth. Just like God's love flows and can move even the hardest heart. Just like God's justice flows and can move the most oppressive systems. Just like God's grace flows and can heal the most broken and shamed spirit. This is a lengthy passage, mostly because it's a lengthy conversation. When Jesus showed up, the Samaritan woman didn't draw away. She dug in deeper. And the deeper she dug, the wider God's love revealed itself. I imagine that when she went back to the city to invite the people to meet the Messiah, some took her up on the invitation to come and see. But how much you want to bet some people couldn't hear past, I met a man at the well. I wonder how many people couldn't hear the good news that day or chose not to because they were so eager to assign blame, shame, and keep those walls of division and exclusion high and tight. We have a choice, friends. We always have a choice. Come and see a man 
who will tell you everything you've ever done and then be ready to let go, receive, and follow. Because it does not matter who you were or what the world tells you you are. It matters what you will become. Come and see. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, whose spirit moved over the waters at the dawn of creation, hear our prayers for all who are thirsty today. We pray for those who are spiritually thirsty, who long to know your presence but don't know where to find you. We pray for those who are alone and without hope, those who long to feel needed and loved, those who are searching for meaning and purpose. God, we pray for all who are physically thirsty, who don't have enough water to drink, food to eat, shelter that is safe and stable. We pray for those thirsty for physical healing and strength, for those fighting cancer and illness, recovering from surgery, facing medical tests, everyday pain, facing labor and childbirth. And God, we pray for those thirsty for rest, whose bodies are tired and who are transitioning to eternal life. O healing river, pour down your waters and heal your people. We pray for Jonathan and Liz, Linda, Aletha, Mike, Nancy, Annette, and Eddie, Andy in Colorado, for the safety and well-being of our teachers and students, for Denver, Joan, for Delina receiving hospice home care, and for a safe trip for Coleman and Linda flying out to see her this week. For Melissa and Dan expecting a new baby tomorrow. For Linda, Rachel, Dick, Becky, Feli. For Connie, Kate, Mimi, Sue, Arlene, Joy, and Sherry. For Nancy, Jeanette, Amanda, Naomi, and Bill. For Butch, Donna, and Joy. God, these are the prayers named aloud. You know the desires of your people. Please hear the prayers prayed silently to you now.
God, pour your love into our hearts that refreshed and renewed weight we may invite others to the living water given to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, the source of living water, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We offer to God a little portion of our great blessing. We share our treasure so that many more of God's children may come to the living water and know health and wholeness of spirit, mind, and body. Let us sing our song of praise this morning. pray the unison prayer of dedication dedicating this week's offerings gracious god may we love as you love may our gifts be made into vessels of your living water that all who thirst may receive drink and renewal in the name of jesus christ amen our sending him another congregational favorite my life flows on in endless song Oh, <laughs> 
Before our benediction, Kylie, how did how does our uh, pill in the glass look? It's still kind of coming apart, but it's starting to a little bit. Let's see. Oh, so I think it's a bird. What does that look like, Hayden? Oh, he's looking at his right now. Still forming, I think. <laughs> Still forming. Fantastic. Hayden, did you make the well? I'm going to spotlight you so we can see. Whoa. Oh, that looks so good. Fantastic. And Grayson helped, right? Yes, Grayson. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, I need a little Okay. Friends, as we depart this time of worship, this week remember to drink deeply of the living water and quench your thirst for truth, for the Lord is with you. Go and bring the good news to all whom you meet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace. Amen. If you are leaving us this morning right now, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. If you would like to stay for coffee hour in small groups, please unmute yourselves and we'll get those groups started.